Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a collection overview video for you. Seeing as we are uh, roughly at the end of the decade here, it seemed like a good idea to update you all on what is sticking around in my permanent collection, because a lot of people ask me that on a regular basis. Um, but actually, before we get started in there, uh, two things. First off, a bunch of people are going to ask me about the, the chest, the storage cases that I've got everything in at the moment. Um, these storage cases are actually a pair of things by uh, Gerstner International. Uh, so Gerstner & Sons is a uh, an American company, um, but uh, they, they're based out of Dayton, but they've uh, made an overseas line, basically, uh, where you can also buy, uh, you can buy boxes that are Gerstner designs, but are made uh, overseas, and at a significantly lower price point. I actually managed to pick up this set used at a very nice price, but I am definitely looking at the full line Gerstner, and that's something you might keep an eye out for reviews on in the future there, because I really do think these kinds of boxes offer a lot for the EDC storage world. But anyways, um, that's the boxes. I'll throw some links down in the description if you're curious about this particular set. Um, other big thing that a lot of people are going to bring up is, well, Nick, you said that this particular piece of gear is a gem. Why don't you have it still? Uh, were you lying to us? Is there a problem here? Did you? Is, is there a secret issue that you're not telling us? Um, the, the answer to that is almost certainly no. I'm not lying to you. It's just the thing is, um, as a gear reviewer, I have a lot of stuff come across my table. Um, a, a lot of it is loaned to me um, by generous viewers. A lot of it is donated by companies, but then goes on for a charitable raffle. And some of it is stuff that I've purchased thanks to the support of my Patreon patrons, um, but then I have to move it down the road. I am not a, I, I mean, I, I am very lucky, but I am not a, you know, endlessly wealthy human being, right? I can't afford to keep every knife that comes across my table, and so I have my collection, you know, as it is right now, but it can't afford to be unlimited, both in terms of space and in terms of, well, just frankly, cash. And so very often there are knives that I absolutely love, but they don't fill a niche better or they don't fill a niche that I have in my everyday life. Uh, and so as a result, they end up getting moved down the road. Um, and that's no demerit on the knife. There are plenty of gems that I don't own, and that's always going to be the case. But if you see something in my collection, what that means more than anything is that A, I like it, and B, I think it's a really good tool for a specific purpose. And so what I kind of want to do here is talk about knives, pens, watches, and lights. And then tell you a little bit about why I think this particular tool is sticking around in my life. Um, and, you know, etc. So let's go on ahead and jump into it here. So we'll pop open the uh, box here. And I've put everything, I've taken things out of the safe, etc. Tossed everything in here just for uh, organizational sake. And so what we can see here is we've got a, uh, the, 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 I've got this thing a little bit organized. It's a little different than the conventional one because I put some foam liners here and some foam here. Um, I've got my watches over here. I've got uh, a bunch of pocket knives up here. And then i got pens, flashlights. Each one of these drawers has their own individual, uh, you know, contents. But we'll go ahead and we'll start off in watches. Um, do not get into watches, of course. Um, the, the four main watches I have in my collection of this guy, this right here is the Omega Seamaster uh, Professional 300. Um, this is a wonderful mechanical watch. It's absolutely a joy, and it's a watch that gets on my wrist on a pretty regular basis. Um, in fact, it is sort of the only diver I need at this point in time, and it's just so damn nice. It's really accurate. It's really excellent. It's quite beautiful, and it's about as fancy as I think I ever need to go in the watch game. I mean, certainly I might look at some fancier stuff from time to time, but by and large, I really think this is, that, that, that's sort of the peak of fancy dude, I think, in my collection. Next up is this guy. This is the uh, Casio, um, uh, oh, good God, OCWS5000C-1AJF, I think. Either way, it's a fancy freaking Casio. Um, 1800 bucks is the, the, the damage on this guy, but it has this, not only does it have this beautiful bezel on there, but this also serves as a stopwatch. It also serves as a world timer. It also serves as a day-date function watch, and it is also syncing every night to the atomic clock, so this serves as the timekeeper within my collection. Uh, that's silly if I talk about a watch collection, but if I want to reset one of my other watches, I know for a fact that this one is always accurate, and so if I set that using the seconds hand off of that, I know I'm on atomic time, so that's great. Um, behind it here, I have my Dressier watch. This is the Omega Seamaster Aquaterra. Um, this is a quartz Aquaterra, and it is absolutely a beautiful watch. I don't end up wearing a dressy watch that often, maybe once or twice a month, if that. Um, but when I do, this is a wonderful one to reach for, and it's an absolutely beautiful 
beautiful watch, and I can put it on a leather strap if I need to dress it up a little bit further. Um, but, you know, I got it at actually a very, very, uh, I got this secondary market used, and, you know, I had to swap the battery and whatnot, but now that I have, it's absolutely great. Um, and so for the price I paid, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. And finally, I've got this little guy right here. This is the um, Seiko uh, Samurai. The moment I have it on an MN leather, or, uh, MN straps, Erica's Originals, sort of strap, and it's absolutely another really nice watch. Um, and it is, frankly, I don't need the Omega here. This is enough, but I am insane, so therefore I own both. Um, but this is a really nice watch, and it's one that I will sometimes throw on the wrist just because, you know, hey, why not, right? Uh, variety being the spice of life and such. So um, those are kind of my other, uh, my main watch collection. I've got a couple of others here. I've got a Citizen BM8180 that is a really nice choice for travel and things like that. Um, that's good. And then I got a couple of other ones for review here, along with a small selection of Nick Chavez Victorinoxes, um, which I'll plug later on. Um, but nevertheless, um, that, that's sort of the bulk of my watch collection. I got some other stuff that'll come and go, but there you go. On the knife front, we'll start off over here. Um, <laughs> right here we have the uh, Holt Knives uh, Spectre number 600. This is a gorgeous freaking knife. I like this knife just substantially. Um, it is completely excessive. It is completely over the top. It is ridiculous in every way, shape, and form. However, it is a lot of joy, and it, uh, it brings me a lot of joy. And so I'm very, very happy to keep this guy in my collection, and I don't see it leaving my collection, frankly, ever. But, um, you know, we, we will see on that. So there we go. Next up here is the Protec Ultimate Gem Sprint. Um, this is a Protec Sprint that's been engraved by Bruce Shaw and is... <laughs> Just freaking beautiful. Um, you know, in the same way that the Holt represents, you know, sort of a lot of really, really impressive machining, a lot of machine work, as well as a lot of hand fitting and whatnot, this represents a lot of hand work. All of this engraving was done by hand. Um, and that's beautiful. And that gives this a very different sense, I think, than the, the Holt. So in a lot of ways, those two are complementary. Both of them are completely over the top and fancy, but the Holt in some ways is a slightly... Uh, they're very different. Speaking of handwork, this is a custom knife by Enrique Pena. This is really, although you could probably make a good argument that either the Holt or the Sprint there that I was just showing you were custom, um, this is really my main custom knife. This is the, the, the Pena Knives Front Flipper Trapper. This knife was actually recently turned into a, um, a production knife, which I have down here, the uh, Pena Knives Front Flipper Trapper uh, X-Series by Rayot. But anyways, um, and I've just got this guy around because it's a great point of comparison and I still do need to review it one of these days you know a little bit more formally but nevertheless this custom is a beautiful knife it has a, a great deal going for it and I, I I just I really really enjoy it I appreciate it it's it's relatively small it's very easily carried and most of the time when I do carry it I carry it in no oh, come off it I carry it in this little sheath right here um which was also made by Pena. So you just stick this guy in the coin pocket and you're freaking good to go. Um, and so this is absolutely a beautiful knife and it is a nice example of the custom knife making art. And so even though I'm not a custom guy, this is a custom that I have and that I very much enjoy. Um, uh, continuing the fancy theme, right here we have a relatively fancy uh, Alamic Knives Busker. Um, this is in a very tight twist damascus steel with their entropic finish all over the knife and handle with a beautifully firework backspacer damascus steel clip. This is a completely excessive and over-the-top knife, but by God, do I kind of enjoy it, and so here it is in my collection, sticking around. Um, I'm going to have a whippersnapper coming up here before too, too long, but, um, you know, as always, I told them to take their time. This knife is very special to me. This is the Chris Reeve Knives Nundi in carbon fiber. Um, this was gifted to me by my viewers. I have a whole video about that. I'll try and remember to link it below, but the thing is... It brings me joy each and every time I carry it, and I will often carry it on consequential days because as you know, as silly as it sounds, it makes me feel like I've got the support of my viewers behind me for whatever I'm doing. And you know, that's that's not nothing, right? And so this knife is always a joy and will never be for sale and is one of the more meaningful knives in my collection as a result. Brad Southern Knives, Mini Talk. Um, absolutely wonderful little piece. Um, I actually did end up selling this at one point in time, but then I handled one again and I got it back. I, I, I ended up buying back my exact knife from my buddy um, who, who, who had bought it off me. 
And oh my God, um, it's just so nice. And especially I said it to Brad, had him just work on the detent a little tiny bit. And now it's just a very, very easy choice for a knife to throw in the pocket on a day where I just might need a cutting tool. So uh, <laughs> all of those days are those days, right? Uh, Chris Reeve knives, small sebenza in the Doppler pattern. As an acoustician, this is a very easy choice for me. Um, and the sebenza is sort of a, a touchstone in the review world, right? You, you kind of have to think about the sebenza anytime you're talking about a high-end knife. I'm not necessarily necessarily that it is the only high-end knife or anything like that, but just because, well, the Sebenza is the Sebenza. One thing that snuck into my collection that surprised me a little bit is this guy. This is the Chaburkov Knives Strizh, small Strizh. Um, in a lot of ways, this feels like the Slavic Sebenza, right? Um, it has a lot of the same things going for it, although it's M390 steel, thinner behind the edge. In a lot of ways, actually, as a user knife, this might be considered preferable. Um, and so the this guy is definitely in the collection, and it's a knife that I, again, it's a very good, simple utility sort of carry knife. It's also rather fancy, but it's a very, very excellent piece and one that I enjoy a lot. The uh, Spydeco Chaparral um, FRN version is not only a great slicer, this knife is a really, really good just cutting tool, period, but it's also tiny and it's also lightweight and it's also relatively inexpensive. I, you're going to see I have a number of much more expensive pieces. This is a knife I can throw in my pocket and because it's, you know, regular production, it's easy to get, etc. If I lose it, if it comes, you know, I'll be sad. It's not something I would appreciate, but it's something I can very easily survive. And so this is very often the knife that I'll carry if I'm doing any kind of traveling or something like that. Uh, the other good travel knife in my collection, of course, being the Spider go dragonfly here in ZDP 189, which is also a beautiful thing. Um, right here we have the uh, Gerber Fastball. Now, this knife has some flaws, most certainly, but this is actually a knife that I built at the Gerber factory when I went out there to visit them. As a result, um, I think sentimentally, you know, they even engraved the blade on there with the Nick Shabazz. Um, as a result, although I, you know, I wouldn't go so far as to call this a gem, um, it is a very substantially nice knife, and it is actually a knife I'll throw in the pocket some days. I wish they'd thinned out the edge. I mean, you can watch my review for my full feelings, but this guy, if nothing else, for a reminder of a really cool experience, is going to stick around in my collection, so there you go. Um, next thing, this is a new one from uh, my last collection update, this is the Quiet Carry Knives Drift. Very nice knife, a very weird knife in a lot of ways. It is a completely rust-proof knife. It is Vanax Super Clean Steel LC200 Analog Bar Insert Titanium. Also very, very thin, very, very slicey, very, very nice little cutter. This is a great little pocket knife here, and it's one that, uh, well, it actually kicked a couple of knives out of my collection, the Spidey Chef as well as the LC200N Native. Now that I have another completely rust-proof knife, this is a, uh, as well as the Waterway Fixed Blade, of course, uh, is also around for me, but um, this fills that niche nicely, and it's just a joy to carry. It's a great size, great ergonomics. This is a really, really great, substantially good knife. So there you go. Um, over here, I've got, for the moment, the Grimsmo Norseman. Um, this is uh, the new Norseman. This is uh, number 3084. Um, this is a big old freaking knife, um, and it's frankly a little bigger than I would carry on most days. However, it is a brand new Norseman with the contoured uh, handles. I'm working on a re-review of this guy, but as it's here, I'm going to do a uh, little bit more uh, carrying of it, and, you know, it's hanging out in my collection. Maybe it'll stick around. Maybe it won't, but this guy is sitting right up here at the top there. Uh, we can switch back over here. This is the Spydeco Sleige Bowie. Um, Spydeco Martin Swish, I believe, is how it's actually supposed to be pronounced. Um, Bowie knife, one of the very best knives Spydeco has made, if not the very best, and frankly, just an amazing piece. I don't carry it quite as often lately, partly because I'm afraid I lose it, I'd be very, very sad because you can't freaking get them anymore because jackasses think this is a $400 knife on eBay, which it isn't. Do not pay more than, you know, $375 or something for this knife. Don't pay over retail for that. Don't promote the scalpers. I hope somebody gets the sense to do a sprint run of them or something down the road, but for the moment, that's a, uh, that, that, that's a beautiful thing. Speaking of Spydeco, right here we have a Spydeco Shaman. Um, this is in a, a uh, set of custom micata handles, um, and then this is a uh, CPM M4 Steel Shaman. Again, unfortunately, this was a limited edition sprint run, but I love M4 Steel, and, uh, you know, it's a great knife, so it's kind of stuck around. And then I also have, at the moment, this guy. This is the Carbon Fiber and S90V Shaman. I love the Spydeco Shaman. Um, this is the only knife, actually, I'm sorry, uh, one of two knives in the collection that I have more than one of. Uh, and so... Yeah, um, I, 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 I just love the Shaman, and either of those are really nice choices if I've got a hard-to-use sort of day, or if I just want a serious business cutting tool with this one. 
usually being my choice of knives for a day when I really, if I'm, you know, doing, you know, construction, home improvement, you know, that kind of stuff, that, that can be useful. Um, these two guys right here are actually the TRM Atom. Uh, right here I have one with the base finish on it um, and the Micata scales. Um, and then on the other side, I have the this guy in the fluted carbon fiber uh, scales with a much higher polish finish that I got from them at USN Show. Um, the Atom, look, this was my knife of the year for 2019. It's no secret that I like this knife. Um, but the thing that really does it for me is that the blade. The blade is ground beautifully. It's thin. It cuts just gorgeously. It's lightweight. It's easy to carry. You can swap the skills. There's so much to love about this. And frankly, this probably could be my only knife. And I probably could be a happy man for it. So, you know, I the Atom is just so damn good. Its little brother is the DRM Neutron. The Neutron is an astounding knife as well. And I like the size of it a lot more. Um, The, the only thing I really Really wish from the neutron is that they'd gone with a thinner thinner edge on it it's it's relatively thin behind the edge relative to every but you know compared to the atom that was a major upgrade and so in a lot of ways i like the neutron a lot but i'm probably more likely to carry the atom on any given day just because it's a slightly better cutting tool i'm really really hoping that the um that, that they, they do a neutron too or something like that down the road um and also i do like the nested liners on the atom a little bit more i but i still like this knife a lot it still does get some pocket time so there's that. Herman Knives Sting. Uh, Herman Knives is a Polish maker, relatively unknown, um, but does really amazing work and, you know, just beautiful machining, things like, this is just a, a substantially nice knife and it's in my collection at the moment. Um, this guy is eventually going to go up for charitable giveaway. Um, at, at the moment, I'm kind of still enjoying carrying it around and I've been doing a couple of other Herman reviews, so I have I've kept it around for that, but still, um, it is absolutely a beautiful knife and uh, it was actually a major surprise for me this year, Herman Knives generally. Uh, this is the Graham Razel. Um, this is a knife that is actually getting carried less and less these days, but it is so iconic for my channel um, that, it, it, that it's kind of stuck around. This is the uh, Graham Razel, uh, Graham Mid-Tech GMT uh, knife, and you know what? I, I like it a lot. It, it's great. It's substantially good. Um, however, at the same time, generally speaking, if I'm wanting something hard to use these days, I just go for the shaman. Um, but nonetheless, um, there's that guy. And then this guy, actually, the video just went live for. This is a Spyderco Para 3 lightweight, except I did a blade swap to put it in Maximet steel, which is a little bit ridiculous, but by God, um, it brings me a little bit of joy. So I have a Maximet Para 3 lightweight here as a result. And so those are the knives that I have sort of on the top there. Um, that doesn't, that's not a, a position of super privilege, so to speak. It just means that those are the knives that fit on the top there. And uh, then I have some other stuff in the drawers down here. Speaking of the drawers, um, actually, we can look at pens real quick. Actually, no, we'll continue with the knifery, um, just for continuity's sake. Um, I have right here, this is a GEC 99 Wall Street pattern with, that was a GEC 99 Wall Street pattern. Um, with a uh, easy open notch, uh, carved in actually by my buddy Toad Sticker, uh, who is an occasional YouTuber. But um, absolutely a beautiful knife, and uh, this was carried on my wedding day, so it ain't going anywhere. I have a custom knife here by Hiroaki Oda. It's a fl uh, friction folder, but it's in a size at which friction folder doesn't matter so much. It was given to me by a friend, so it's sticking around. Um, I have right here a custom, or uh, not custom, I have a production slip joint by J.E. Made Knives. Um, the, uh, it's a great little slippy. It's a little heavier than a lot of slippies are. Balance is a little, but you know what? By God, it's kind of nice. Um, and so that's my, uh, that's one of my token slippies here. And then, of course, I have my, uh, Birdshot IV, uh, Swiss Army knife, as well as a, uh, Nick Shabazz Swiss Army knife. If I really want to carry something that is branded for myself, which is a little awkward, I'm going to be honest with you, but it's definitely, it is a thing I can do. Um, if we scroll down just a little bit further, I don't know if scrolling is the thing we want here, but nonetheless, um, in this drawer here, we have the Pena uh, production front flipper trapper I already showed off. We have the uh, Sandrine TCK version 2.0 slip joint, uh, knife and tungsten carbide. Uh, this guy is absolutely sticking around, if nothing else, so I can put some more use on it um, and just get a better sense of exactly how much that edge retention sticks around. Right here I have a reground Spyderco Nirvana, which is a really cool knife. It is, uh, is this the only integral in my collection? I think it is. Huh, that's weird. Yeah, it's probably not that weird. Integrals aren't all that common. By integral I mean that there is, uh, it's one piece of titanium 
wrapping around the whole thing. Very, very interesting piece. And with this regrind that makes it actually cut well, as well as removing the ugly blade finish, this was a razor edge knives regrind. Um, it is also one of the better cutters in my collection. Uh, and so this is absolutely a joy and uh, was given to me. Actually, it was made for reground for one friend and then given to me by another friend. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, this is uh, the Norseman that is sort of my own and that I've had for a while. I ended up having it um, re-anodized to a nicer blue. Um, but this is a uh, Norseman number uh, 821. And uh, there's a prob there's a pretty good chance that this guy's going to stick around, if nothing else, because there's the sentimentality with it. Um, but this is a an absolutely beautiful knife as well. And uh, this is a slightly older Norseman uh, relative to the brand new one that I've just picked up with the contoured scales and whatnot. But uh, it remains an absolutely beautiful thing. This is a Boost Blade Smoke uh, full size. Very nice knife. Um, it's stuck around for a while, uh, and so th there you go. Um, we have ourselves the North Arm Knives Skaha. Eyes of the version 2, uh, which remains an amazing piece. It doesn't find that much pocket time just because uh, it's a little bit on the thicker side and because I have so many damn things that I want to carry at any given moment. But it remains one of the sweeter actions in my uh, collection and remains an absolute gem. This is the Ferrum Forge Archbishop 2.0 Pro line, and they put a, uh, a custom blade finish on there for me. Um, this is uh, just, yeah, it's a wonderful freaking knife. I, I'm a big fan of the Pro line. I'm a big fan of the Archbishop in general, and this is just beautifully made. I, I, I just, I like it. It's, it's a solid little piece right there. This is the CRKT M390 and Titanium 25th Anniversary Home Front Pocket Knife. Um, this is the Cricut Home Front, complete with their field strip technology and everything like that, except just made better. Um, made with higher end materials, made with, uh, you know, just better, with a great detent and everything like that. This is a spectacular little knife here. Um, very, very underrated, and uh, that's definitely there. And then, of course, we have the original Z Hunter, complete with terrible blade play, as well as all of the other joys that make the Z Hunter a Z Hunter. But this is the original one straight from that wonderful gas station. Absolutely a joy. And, uh, oh, the Z Hunter. Not for sale. Not for sale. And then I have a collection of smaller knives. I've got a Spyderco Ladybug and Manbug over here. I have a, uh, I don't know what it's called when it's a salt, maybe the Waterbug. That would, that would make sense, right? This is an H1 steel, uh, fully serrated bug right there. And then, of course, we already talked about the Spydeco Dragonfly, which is an absolutely wonderful travel knife. And then if we go one drawer down here, we see a couple of other miscellaneous things. <laughs> CRKT Shock. Um, still, actually... Have I not hit my review? I, okay, I should hear my review of this one of these days. Um, it's a completely ridiculous freaking knife. Um, but they, 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 there's a level at which it's like, okay, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Um, this is a Protect California Legal Magic, um, which is a, uh, the, the Magic is an absolutely awesome knife. Uh, and uh, this is the Cali Legal version of it. And that's a joy. And they've done a little bit of engraving, so to speak, which is entertaining. We have the Buck 110, of course, to please the Uncle Randy contingent in the world. And because it's a great point of comparison, as a knife reviewer. This is the pair of three that was left over with BD1N steel and gray handles after I did my Maximet blade swap. This was originally hosting a Maximet blade for a pair of three. Um, and so there's that. This is the uh, Hogue Knives uh, Doug Ritter uh, RSK Mark 1 G2. <sighs> and it is an absolutely wonderful knife. Um, an absolutely great user and just a, a joy to, ha to have around, generally speaking. Um, so that's in the collection here. This uh, actually is just a recent pickup here. I don't know if it's going to stick around for the long term, but this is a, um, a CRKT uh, CEO uh, with micarta scales as well as these bronzy anodized liners. Um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, the humble open L, of course, here in a carbon steel. And then I have, uh, just for, as a point of comparison here, a Max, uh, um, this is not Maximet, this is a Crewwear. Uh, Spydeco Native 5 Lightweight. So, uh, yeah, I've got that around. And then there were actually two knives. Actually, there might be a couple more, but I, the, the two I can think of offhand that are currently out and about with other reviewers um, are the uh, Monterey Bay Knives EZC um, the, 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 and the Monterey Bay Knives EWC. The EZC being a small fl uh, frame lock that is just an absolutely wonderful little utility pocket knife. And then the EWC being a flipping slip joint, which was just really kind of compelling there. And so I believe that covers the... Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> it doesn't cover the knives because I have a problem. Um, in the bottom drawer here, I have a bunch of stuff that doesn't come up quite as often but brings joy. Um, this... <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, hand engraved by Spade Knife Works. Um, just, I, I, I recently found myself in a situation where I was sending a picture of this arrangement to a legitimate manufacturer. I, and I, I went ahead and I took the picture of the whole arrangement with the Kaizen foam that's cut out here. And then I, I, you know, I sent it off and then I looked at the email and I realized that this guy was peeking out from the side of it. And it was just like, oh God, there went any hope of them believing they're dealing with a professional here. Um, this is the carbon steel. Oh, I'm sorry. The other open L was stainless. That's a carbon uh, open L number eight. This right here is, um, <laughs> oh, Robbie, the Z hunter that I actually had to carry for a week. Thank you, Patreon patrons. Screw you, Patreon patrons. Thank you, Patreon patrons. Um, this is a uh, old, old, old Kaiser knife uh, that I that was actually given to me in a Reddit um, gift swap or a knife swap uh, secret Santa sort of affair. This is the Zombie Nick Shabazz, a completely ridiculous knife, but nevertheless sort of a joy. The viewer actually had it laser engraved, which is hilarious. This was given to me by my lovely mother. After she had viewed one of my Terrible Knives live videos, she found this at, uh, well, actually Newport, Rhode Island, in case I ever forgot where she picked it up. And I actually keep around a small selection of really nice budget pieces to steer people towards. CGB, uh, CJB, uh, wow, I can't freaking talk. CJRB Centros, right here. Civivi Backlash, right here. Uh, CRKT Ruger LCK, right here. Great piece. Uh, the Ontario are at number one, but um, the uh, d -d 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 -uh, rat number... Oh, that is the rat number one in D2 Steel. Guys, I I'm, I can't say Ontario rat number one without following it up by the uh, Ontario rat number two. It's a problem for me. Um, This right here is the Ruwaiki P801. I always forget if it's the 801 or the 108. And then finally, I have a duplicate of my very first pocket knife that I got as a Cub Scout. This little guy right here. It's an absolutely terrible knife, but it takes me back. And so, considering I got it for about eight bucks or something on eBay, why not, right? So that right there... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep saying, now I'm done with my knife collection, but not quite. I actually have a couple of fixed blades as well. Putting aside, like, kitchen knives and things like that, I've got right here the Spydeco Respect Bowie, which is a completely large and ridiculous knife, but it's one that I find exceptionally beautiful, and so I've kept it around. And then I also have the Spydeco Knives Waterway, which is in LC200 and steel, and is just an absolutely great little piece. Um, and so as a good utility fixed blade, that's a solid choice right there. Um, so I think that actually covers, I think that actually covers knives. Yeah, I've got a couple of other things that are edge tools, and actually we can talk about multi-tools here. I've got a uh, Leatherman Wave Plus right here with a pocket clip, which is a great everyday carry utility multi-tool. Uh, Leatherman Squirt PS4. I have right here a uh, straight razor, and I keep it in here because I've got rust inhibition going on in here. But I will occasionally shave with a straight razor. And so, uh, you know, that's there, and so I can just run over and grab it before I uh, use that. This is my very, very first pocket knife that I... Well, no, that's not true. This is one of the first ones that I bought with my own money. It is a credit card companion from Tool Logic. Every damn part of this thing is awful, but by God, it is a part of my history. And so it sticks around. And I think that covers me for pocket knives. <sighs> Guys, I have a problem. That is the thesis statement for this entire video, is I, Nick Shabazz has a freaking problem. On the pen front, um, what we have here are a couple of different things. This is the Twisby Eco, which is my very favorite fountain pen at this point in time. Um, absolutely spectacular writer, and I tend to keep them, I actually have two of these, one at here and one at work, in a stub nib, uh, which is great and uh, brings me a lot of joy. Just writes beautifully. I have in here a couple of USG Urban Survival Gear, that is Thai Scribe Bolts. I have the original version from the original Kickstarter, and then I have the uh, la uh, later version right here. The, oh no, this is the mini version. But nevertheless, so I've got the tie scribe bolt. I've got a mini tie scribe bolt right here. I have the, um, the tactile turn bolt action pen, which is an absolute solid freaking gem um, and a very nice fancier option. I have here a pen that I have stolen from a Hampton Inn. Sorry about that, guys. Um, here we have a um, pocket jotter. Uh, that is a Parker jotter. For those of you who are uh, not speaking the Shabazz, um, but it's uh, not like a pocket jotter, as in I, I, I park a car and then I... Uh, 
Dukachata bus, something like that. Um, so there you go. Um, Machine Era Classic right here. I have the uh, the stainless version as well as this brass one, which just came out of my pocket, which should probably tell you a little something about the uh, the amount that it's in my pocket here. Uh, we have a big click stick pen and, of course, a Pilot G2 for size comparison. So that is the pen collection at the moment. I've got a couple of others around, obviously, but those are the ones that are uh, common for my EDC. In the flashlight country, I've got a pair of EGTAC D25As, um, AAA lights, absolutely magnificent, a lot, lot of joy in them. Um, although, I'll be honest, these days, most of the flashlight carry for a small thing has been this guy. This is the Jetbeam RRT01 version 2, um, which is a rotary light, meaning that as you turn this dial here, you get the exact amount of brightness you'd like. Um, I have the Thru-Night Neutron 2C. Absolutely a great flashlight here. And then, of course, if you would like a little bit more in the way of lumens, you have the Nightcore TM10K 10,000 lumens flashlight, um, which is a serious piece of flashlightery. Um, and it's actually a really nice choice for outdoor walkings and things like that. You can see right here, charges very good, so I don't need to plug it back in, which is a beautiful thing. Um, and so those are my flashlights. Oh, and I've got a Rovi Von Aurora in the back over here, which is a nice piece, if nothing else, for the uv attitude of it, because I can turn it on this way. What is it? If I hit three times? Uh, you would think I would be a brilliant man. One, two, three. There we go. UV light. And so that's very good for charging the loom on watches and things like that. And red light and blinker. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That wasn't UV. Anyways. Turn it off. There we go. Good. So there we go. Already covered this drawer. Over here in this drawer, I have a selection of lactase supplements. Because I am a lactose intolerant individual, I generally try to promote tolerance. But uh, in this case, lactase or lactose, I'm not freaking having any of it. Nope, nope, nope. And then over here, I've got a couple of miscellaneous things. I've got uh, a couple of watch straps, the bracelet off the samurai. I have a tie clip, uh, tie tack that is, well, tie clip, I suppose, um, that was given to me by my godfather on the day of his wedding. Uh, I got to be my godfather's best man, which was just an absolutely wonderful experience. Um, and so there you go. A couple of random other pins, another tie tack, a uh, the, the, the little cheapy silver wedding ring I'll wear if I travel in places. Um, and uh, there you go. So uh, there we go. That is the overall Nick Shabazz EDC gear collection. I also have a, a number of other tools that are in, kind of nearby that help me maintain this. I've got, you know, straps and things like that. You know, big old freaking strop loaded with green compound over here, and then sharpening stones. I've got one of these four-way strops with the high polish sort of thing. So on this side, I've got uh, six micron, three micron, one micron, 0.5 micron diamond uh, paste on there. We got some uh, the Spydeco Golden Stone. A couple of other things going on down there, as well as some leather pouches for things. This little caddy here by uh, K and H Leather holds a slip joint and a pen right next to each other, um, side for the Machine Era Classic. Absolutely a beautiful thing, but yeah, this is my uh, this is my overall collection here. Like I said, a lot of this stuff lives in the safe, generally speaking, but I brought it all out for the thing, and uh, hopefully this is going to be interesting to you. And uh, most of all, I hope that you uh, have yourselves just an absolutely wonderful day, and uh, if you got any questions, do let me know what's going on down below. And if the question is, am I a hoarder? Um, that's a really good question. We'll talk about it in a later video. <laughs> so there you go. Hope this has been interesting. Have yourself an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.